<laughs> oh, man. Tony, you're back again. Uh, another big fight, of course, that everybody's looking forward to. I guess, what's the energy? It seems, seems pretty upbeat right now. What's, what's the energy for you ahead of this one? Oh, man, it feels great. I just got back from Big Bear. Uh, it was a really good camp. I put on some new muscle. Uh, I didn't think I could be possible, but leg day, and I, I understand why everybody avoids that shit now. Nice. Uh, listen, you're a much beloved figure in the sport, man. I know there was an arrest in May, and people were kind of worried about you. What's what's his health like? What's his life like? What can you say about that and, and kind of where you are overall? Well, I'm going to be real with you. There's a whole bunch of slander and a whole bunch of shit that probably shouldn't have been down, but you know what I mean? There's going to be some lawsuits and some other shit that's going down, so you guys really want to get into it. I've always taken heat from the media. I've always taken heat from the media, and I'll, I'm telling you guys, which is funny, you want to laugh about it, which is kind of cool, but you guys weren't there. I was there. So I know what the fuck's going on. I pay attention to what I fucking had to do. I'm going to be real with you. I'm here at UFC 291 because I asked for this fight. Now, I never really ask for fights because I'm always just getting handed shit or I'm always getting handed shit. I'm cool, though. I'm going to be real with you. I feel, I feel really fucking good. I went out there and I trained my ass off. I made it possible because I trusted my team to get me there. Brought my coach in from Grand Valley State University, which has been my coach for 18 years. So he regulated my recovery, regulated my, my output and everything else we needed to. And we're out there scouting bear. I don't know if you guys see my pages and stuff, but we had a bear that was around our camp, right? And so I ended up deciding to fucking go and track it down. So we found his water hole. We found everything else. Like, I'm a hunter. You guys don't really realize that. I started hunting when I was little, but I just don't like to kill shit. I like to track. And Bobby, I utilized this whole entire camp to be like a sniper. You got to find your in, you got to find your out, and you got to fucking have your route, and you have to make sure that you're going to get the job done. So I'm out there doing my shit right now, and um, I'm very well conditioned. So if you don't like to hear what the fuck I have to say, so fuck you. You say you're tracking a bear. Were you out there like like with weapons or anything? Or are you just out there, hands and feet and? It's blades and shades. I don't fuck around. So when it goes out there, when it talks to me and everything else like that, you know what I mean. I have to protect my camp. So when I'm out there, my family was out there too, and they went and they walked. I had my wife and my kid. When we're tracking, I had two different places. I had one on the south, the south part of the hill, and I had one at the top of the north part. So I had two points of access. So when we were out there and we saw the cans going out there, it used to be funny when we used to say, hey, you know what, if you guys have a chance, you see a bear, run down the hill as fast as you can. Well, it turned into reality when my guy over here, he actually got, he rolled in, right? And it was the same time when he rolled in, it was the same time I saw the bear. And we scouted him and I ended up doing it like, you, you know topography maps, right? Yeah, fuck regular maps. Topography maps is where it's at. You can tell elevation everything. I found his water table and I found where he was sitting and that was by my other, my, my other house. And the way that he was routing, Everybody would always leave their trash in these bins. You're supposed to take care of your shit. And the trash bins would always be over. But I saw that he was rounding out. He was going further and further out and getting closer and closer and closer at camp. So I told my coach, I was like, let's scout him. And my coach just got back from Africa and hunting. And he just killed a couple of wildebeest and some sables and some other shit. And that's where my trip is going to be next. And so um, it's a little different, man. I told him, I was like, let's go, let's go bait this bear. And we actually did. And we caught him in our trash. It was funny as fuck. I mean, does anybody say, how about we just stay inside, Tony, and not do that? that no, because immediately as soon as we saw it, what do we do? I made everybody go for a walk with me. <laughs> and it was the middle of nothing, and we all lost power for how long? Like almost a day. So when we lost power, I mean, I had no AC. I, I put myself in the worst position possible to go. My camp was really cool. I'm going to be real with you. They had the nicer cabin, myself and my wife and my kids. We had the one which wasn't so nice because I needed to have that. I needed to get back to Rocky style where I needed to fucking get that grunge in again. And with the Baron was cool. It wasn't like I wanted to go and hurt him, but I wanted to scout him. I wanted to see how, how good I was. And I'm pretty fucking good. Found his water table, found his food supply, found out where his route was, found everything that was, and then boom, there he goes. And on our way out, he gave us a little salute. That's wild. So you said you asked for this fight. Was it you asked for this matchup, or you asked for just like this date, this, this, uh, you know, this event? I asked for the fight. I asked for a fight. I want to get back into it, but I want to get back into it wholeheartedly. Last couple of fights, I haven't really been in it. I mean, I'm be real with you guys. Trying to impress you fuckers is not my forte. I'm be real with it. I'm not trying to do that. When we were preparing for Lee, I was eating slushies that week. You know, when we had Nate, Nate was hard to take fucking serious. It was almost like, I don't want to lose, but I'm going to be real. Like, here, take your fucking victory. Get the fuck out of here and go make some money. Here, let me slap you on your ass so you can go over there, dude. Because you obviously don't want to fucking be here. I've helped out the UFC plenty of times. gotten paid and I've did my shit. Taken my rest, remodeled my house. I've tried to figure out what the fuck you want to do. I bought a business for my retirement. I had a manufacturing. I have one of the oldest manufacturing businesses for wrestling equipment. And I'm making machines. It's funny. So everybody's all talking about Boston Dynamics. I'm the kind of guy, the type of that fucking helps you prepare for that shit. Bobby Green, uh, veteran of the sport, obviously uh, entertaining style. I mean, what are you expecting? The way you guys match up, it seems like it could be a pretty wild fight in there. I think he's a confused individual. 
I think he doesn't know what the hell that guy's going to expect from me. You know, that type of guy is kind of that one where you really don't understand it. He texted me on Father's Day, and it said, uh, maybe Bobby Green. I already knew it. I had a contact. So before, we had the same sponsor from uh, King of the Cage a long time ago. I met him, and he was with this lady. I had no animosity. He was just cool. And, you know, say what's up. And even after his land of Venata fight, he comes back, and he was smiling. I gave him, hey, good job. You know, kind of like that when I was about ready to go walk out of mine. And then he texts me on Father's Day when I'm enjoying my family time, saying, hey, is this El Kukui? Happy Father's Day, I told him. I already knew it was him, and then he said, beforehand I texted him, he texted me twice more, and he said, uh, hey, yo, this is your opponent. I already knew. But well, afterwards he said, happy Father's Day. Now, I'm not going to call him a bitch ass, but I just saw him in the lobby not too long ago. Mr. Flashy, it's cool, it's your thing, it's your, it's your key, I get you. But when he saw me, he looked like he saw the fourth horseman of death. It's kind of fucking crazy. And I explain to people too, when people get quiet, when you walk into a room, it's different when you have to demand presence, but I don't really demand presence, but everybody gets fucking quiet when I walk into a room. And that dude was really quiet. Last thing for me, Tony. What does this fight represent for you, right? Because you said you kind of weren't really into the last ones, and you made all the sacrifices and made all the right moves. So what does this win mean for you? I mean, is this about proving something to yourself, to other people? What does this mean for you? No, I want to win. Uh, you got to realize it, dude. I'm not used to losing. I mean, I'll tell you, I'll show you guys, like, from – I've been competing in sports since I was 30, like maybe four, five. I've been competing in sports for 30 plus years at the highest level. I mean, talking about state championships in football, baseball, wrestling, national championship in wrestling. Could have chose different sport. Could have been baseball. Could have been football. Could have went on, did this stuff. I chose wrestling, which was cool because I had an opportunity. After wrestling, went over here and did this stuff. Man, you get burned out. Pandemic. Took a full pandemic for me to lose my 12-fight win streak. Not angry at it. Took, you know, but I had to fire some coaches. I had to fire some people because I was trying to get them back and they weren't good for me. It was toxic. It was toxic to me and I didn't realize it, how much I was looking forward to that. You know, I, I can go and reiterate on some things, but I won't. But what I'll say is my focus is back. And it's not like, oh, deadly, this. no, it's the focus is back. If I'm sending my people out there to go and like to, to the wrestling or, or, or in football or whatever it is, I got to make sure that I play my part. I got to make sure I maintain my lane. I got to make sure I do my shit. And last couple of fights, I hadn't been doing that. I've been helping people up, helping them up, trying to help these fighters up and coming. You know, I got a couple of boxers, a couple of MMA fighters I've been looking after. I had to say, you know what? I have to excuse myself for a second. I got to quit helping all these different types of people, and I have to help myself. And the way that you do that is by getting to work, is by getting it done. A coach always says, nobody ever drowns in sweat, which is pretty cool. And I'm going to be real with you. I had to get back to that kind of moment and mentality of it where we were two-time national champions at GVSU, man. I'm going to be real. And I had to realize that what kind of an athlete that I am. And I'm going to bring that this weekend. Tony, right here. Can you talk about uh, graduating from Harvard? Because that seemed to be a big story when it came up. People weren't, you didn't even know you were back in school or anything. Well, the funny part was I didn't really graduate from Harvard. It's a program that I'm still in, still in. And that's awesome. It's a Harvard, HBS, it's a continuing education type of thing. Um, it's fucking badass. Everything that I've seen the UFC going through from the time that I first started all the way through here. I mean, you just wait. My business and everything else, where I'm at in this moment of life, um, like I said, I just secured my retirement. For that, you don't have UFC uh, matching my numbers. You know, if I'm buying stock, they're not matching my stock. They're not, they're not looking for my 401k. They're not doing that. Maybe if I plant this seed now, it will, because last time I said the insurance thing, what happened? It went, right? I'm a trendsetter. What I did at HBS was just to go back to school so my kid could understand that you have to make the grade to play. So you're talking about me getting my homework from HBS, Harvard Business School, doing the same time my kid is doing his homework. And then I'm making him go to the academy with me, and I'm telling him, like, this, is, this is how it goes. It never stops. It never stops. You could say it, right? How long have I been saying I want to continue education? Long time. Everybody's like, yeah, sure, Tony, whatever, man. It's easy as fuck. I want to go back. I want to get my doctorate. So that's another challenge for myself. When I keep challenging myself and I keep setting these goals, that keeps me going. For a long time, I was just floating there. My mom would always say, you're floating. We need to tie you back down here for a second. I get it, but no, no, no I'm a dreamer. I'm a big dreamer, and I dream fucking big. I want to have my, my, my machines in every single UFC gym, and I guarantee it's going to happen. I'm going to be real with you. Matt Sarah says he wants to be the first customer. I'm like, you know what? You got to stand in line because Kerry Kolat from University of Wyoming has got two on the way, and I got a couple from a couple other universities. I wanted to become a scout, and I am a scout up and coming fighters and all these talent that coming up and sometimes they just don't know how to get access to this, this agency right here. 
well, it doesn't have to be just this agency, but I love this agency and I work for it right now. So that's what I do is I, I, I secured this position. So if I ever wanted to see a fighter, an up and coming athlete, do whatever, I make a phone call to these guys at these universities that I have all these contacts for. And they trust me because I work my ass off. And the guy that I bought the company from, Coach Catcher, badass, is Dan Gable's roommate. And I brought him over there, right? And I got some really cool words and I got to, um, I got to uh, be in his apprentice for like a week, learning how to build these things and just learning to just completely, I can't explain it. When you have people that have experience in a sport that you have, and, and it's just amazing, like just the amount of like information that you can up, like just download through it, just always, always, always. And somebody that doesn't look at your questions like they're stupid. And they're like, they're giving you information that's valued. Like I do that. I give away millions of dollars of information, and inspiration on my Instagram page. You guys have no idea how far that shit goes. Look, at, there's a new Turtles movie coming out, right? Yeah, right? I mean, there's a bunch of stuff that goes out there. I'm not saying I'm the one, but I'm going to be real with you. When it goes into music, taste, and, and trends and shit like that, that's awesome. But you can't force it. And I'm going to be real. So I'm here this week, not forcing anything. I did all the work. HBS, I love HBS. I'm still there. I'm still doing it. I keep in touch with my advisors. In the UFC, I just gave Dana Knuckles. And I told him, I was like, you know, that's boat move. Signing up with the WWE. Because everybody wants to copy the NFL. Now, NFL wanted to get to, what, 27 bill per cap? Well, no, tw by, no, 29 bill by 27. And what, UFC just go in with the WMEIE, right? And they were about, like, 23. So, I mean, if you wanted to get there and then you wanted to create leagues and you wanted to actually get paid and so on and so forth, it's the right way. So my facility is still standing, right? It was the only one that didn't close during the pandemic. I got my coach, Dave Mills, and I got a couple other coaches and, and associates that I'm going to be doing some really big things in the next couple of years. Hope that answered your question. I mean, who will be in your corner on Saturday? I got coach Dave Mills. I got my trainer uh, and buddies. I have Juan Gomez, another coach, and I have Jeremiah Vance, another trainer and coach. And I also have Brandon Gibson here as well. He'll be here tonight. Tony, who are you picking to win between Conor McGregor and Michael Chandler? I hope they knock each other the fuck out. I was supposed to coach on the Ultimate Fighter. I can't hate on it, but I was supposed to coach on the Ultimate Fighter against Khabib. He's off on his world tour still. And uh, I guess whatever he had happening, he didn't have enough balls to go and coach his cousin. So I already knew that there was something pretty major that hadn't up happened to him. So around that time, we were in November when I knew that we were going to coach against him. I had meetings with, with Hunter and so on and so forth, and this was, this was game, dude. I did everything I needed to do in order to get Khabib back, but he ran away like a pussy, so... Fuck you, Khabib. This was his last season. You were going to coach it against Khabib? Yeah, you guys didn't even know that, did you? No. Nope. No, nobody knew that shit. But that's the behind-the-scenes type of stuff. That's the kind of that talks that I have with the brass. That's the kind of talks that I have that you guys don't have no idea what relationship that I have with them. And it's cool as fuck because when you're clutch like me, you get to kind of talk a little bit. And lastly, what about Nate, the guy you said, you know, you slapped him on the ass and sent him away. He's now fighting Jake Paul. Do you think you slept... Set him out with a victory to get against Jake, or do you think he might? I hope they knock each other the fuck out. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna be real, like I don't give a fuck. They wanted me to do some like some some betting thing to get paid through sponsor, talk about the fight. I hope they knock each other the fuck out. I hope they make money doing it, and I hope that the, you know the next generation is not a bunch of pussies that they follow the suit that I'm following because I got a lot of these older dudes like Don Fry, Chuck Liddell that are looking to me to carry that fucking that that flag and then one day pass it on, but it ain't happening any fucking time soon. Do you also hope Dustin and Justin knock each other the fuck out? Absolutely. <laughs> Double knockout, bitches. That's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to watch my language, guys. You guys just keep following. You just keep following. It. Fuck. Came in and called us fuckers. That was the first thing he said. You know, I want to be real with you guys. It's always been cool. And then um, I feel at this point in time in my life that I'm just barely hitting my prime, which is crazy. And one of my coaches, Juan, he was uh, earlier, we were doing mitts between interviews. And I had, I told him, I was like, I've been getting up early and I just, you know, I have to lay down. I was like, I know I have to lay down. And I got up and I did my interview and I was like, hey, is the room open? He said, everybody went down there and said, yeah. I said, I'll be right there and bring your mitts. Didn't even wrap up. I went and I hit the pads and I'm fucking sharp. I'm real sharp right now. I'm just as sharp as I look, baby. Tony, just one more. Um, everyone looks at the record, you know, sees the five losses, but we know the level of competition. You say you're feeling like you're in your prime. So 
Like, what do you feel about your future in the sport? Is it safe to say, like, no amount of setbacks or anything are going to push you out? It's only going to be. You counted you all of right? my wins in my lifetime, and you counted all of my losses. I'm going to be real with you. Even from college and football and baseball and all of that, there's not much. There's probably less than 20, man. Like, I'm going to be real. Maybe 25, something like that. I mean, most of it's all green or blue. Like, you know what I mean? It was like all wins, wins, wins. There was hardly any reds. But if there was, it was like a hiccup. It took a big hiccup for me to get my shit together, which was I needed to get my own shit. Nobody else was going to tell me. They could propose it. They could say, oh, Tony's going whatever. He's going to retire. No, motherfuckers, fuck you. I'm going to be done when I want to be done. But I'm also going to have to do what I have to do in order to get to where I want to get. Five fights in a title, baby. I'm out.